Today we have this brand new Chevy 2500 with the 6.6 .6 liter gas. Yes, you heard that right, 6.6 .6 liter gas engine. And I'm gonna tell you guys what I think about it as a heavy duty licensed mechanic. Good morning, we have this 6.6 .6 liter gas engine right here, ready to rock. But first, let's do a little cold start. So I don't know how I feel about these front ends. Some people seem to like them. I just think it looks a little awkward. I don't know, can't put my finger on it, but I do like the GM front ends better. This is the 2500 HD. All in all, not a bad looking truck um, for a tradesman trim, if you will. These steps, again, I don't necessarily like the look, but they are very nice to have, especially the front one there, because these trucks, they're so freaking tall these days that, uh, a short guy like me has problems reaching in over the rails there, the bed rails. So those are nice to have. I wish my power wagon had something like that, but uh, it doesn't. Yeah, you got these mirrors again. These are kind of like a controversial thing. You know, I I don't know. They, they're okay, they're okay. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. What is going on today, guys? My name's Alex. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have the 6.6 .6 liter l 8 V8 from Chevy. You guys have been asking about it, so I figured, well, here it is. First off, we're gonna go over some specs, talk about whether or not this 6.6 .6 liter gas engine shares any components with the 6.6 .6 liter diesel. Um, and then I'll talk about some things that I like about the engine. And then obviously we gotta go over some common issues and some things I don't like. And then finally, I'll give you my conclusion on this engine and what I think. But first, I want to thank the channel's official apparel sponsor, Old North Co. They are a local London, Ontario company founded by two sisters. They have some great Canadian outdoor designs. They have some cool t-shirts, sweaters, hats. They even have cool stuff for your dogs. I'll link all their information down below as well as a 10% off discount code. So check them out if you guys are interested. So right off the bat, this 6.6 .6 liter V8 was introduced in 2020, replacing the long-standing 6.0 engine, which has been around for about 20 years. Now this 6.6 .6 liter engine is part of GM's LT engine family, and this thing is producing about 401 horsepower, as well as 464 pound-feet of torque. Not the most powerful big displacement engine by any means, but it is a big step up from the 6.0, um, about 40 more horsepower and roughly 80 more pound feet of torque. So you are gonna get some added power there. The other nice thing about this is that your peak torque is quite a bit lower at 4,000 RPM than the 6.0, which is really nice in an HD truck. Now judging for yourselves based upon the power numbers, this is not a performance built engine by any means. It's a very simple, reliable cam in block push rod V8. And the beauty of that is you can run 87 octane fuel all day long. This engine is meant to be worked and put away wet and we can see that by how GM has beefed up this engine. This engine comes with a deep skirt cast iron block, comes with six bolt nodular mains, forged crankshaft, forged connecting rods to really beef up that bottom end and give you guys maximum strength. Now GM did add some nice modern touches to this engine like direct injection. That's gonna add to some more precise fuel management, um, broader power bands, higher compression ratios, as well as some better fuel economy. GM decided not to add their active fuel management to this engine, which is basically their fancy term of cylinder deactivation. And I think a lot of people are gonna like that, but I'll talk more about that in just a second. So I think a major question some people are gonna have is whether or not the 6.6 .6 liter gas, which is in this truck, is basically the same engine as the 6.6 .6 .6 Duramax diesel, but just burns gasoline instead. And uh, the short answer is no, they are completely different engines. So the Duramax engine is a turbocharged engine. So right away your intakes and your exhaust manifolds are gonna be completely different. 
your pistons, your piston rings, as well as your heads are gonna be completely different because of the diesel's extremely high compression ratio. The fueling systems are gonna be completely different. Now there may be some smaller componentry that are shared between the two engines just for convenience sake for GM, but for the most part, they are vastly different. And if we wanted to get technical, they're actually not even the same size engines. So the Duramax has a total displacement of 402.7 cubic inches while this engine the LAT only has 401.1 cubic inches so in reality they are actually different sized engines but obviously GM on paper just rounds it up to 6.6 .6 liters for convenience sake so to the average person it may seem odd why GM and other companies like Ford and Ram are developing high displacement gasoline engines for their HD pickup trucks when the rest of the world is kind of going with smaller displacement and even electric hybrid technology. Now, I think there are a couple of reasons why GM and other companies are doing that, mainly because I think people and um, you know, companies are frustrated with the issues and the expenses of a modern diesel engine. Um, you know, I work on diesel engines for a living and I would say without a doubt, probably once a day, I get to work on a derated diesel truck purely just because of an emissions issue. And honestly, <laughs> it is a cash cow for a dealership because we are the only ones with the um, software to really truly diagnose the complexity of the emission system when it comes to having errors or faults. So it can be very costly as well as very time consuming to own a modern diesel if the emission systems are not working properly. So I think fleets and even individual buyers are looking for an alternative to an HD diesel engine. And with these bigger displacement gas engines, we're seeing the towing numbers come up and up and up into a traditional diesel engine territory. So you don't really need to buy a diesel if you wanna to tow 15,000 pounds anymore. So that is the first thing that I really like about this engine in comparison, I guess, to the diesel option is just the simplicity of this engine. You're not going to need to worry about putting DEF in here. You're not going to need to worry about D-rates, emission systems. It's a pretty simple engine. Obviously, when you add direct injection, it adds a little bit of complexity. But when you compare it to the complexity of a modern diesel engine, this thing is so simple. And usually, simplicity leads to reliability. And uh, so that's the first thing I really like about this engine is just its pure simplicity. Another thing I really like about this LT engine in here is that it comes with a cast iron block. That's gonna give you a ton of strength, lots of bottom end strength. And in fact, this is the only LT engine to come with an iron block. Every other LT engine came with an aluminum block and that's perfect for performance based engines like the ones in the Corvettes. But having a cast iron block in here is perfect for a work truck and it's just gonna really give you guys that longevity durability that you're probably looking for in a work truck. Now, the third thing I really like about this engine is the fact that it does not come with active fuel management or GM's um, cylinder deactivation technology. Now, the 5.3 liter V8s are having huge issues with lifter failures right now. Um, and that is mainly stemming from the active fuel management technology, or so it seems. Um, if you guys are more interested in that, I made a video on it, I'll, I'll link it down below. But uh, yeah, it's a good thing that GM did not put um, the active fuel management on this engine because it does seem to be causing a lot of issues with the 5.3 V8. Now the fourth thing I really like about this engine is the fact that GM added a long stroke to it. Now this engine shares the exact same board diameters as all the other 6.2 liter LT engines, but this thing has a much longer stroke than those engines, giving it the added displacement, the 6.6 .6 liters. In fact, this Chevy small block has the longest stroke out of any Gen 3, Gen 4, and Gen 5 Chevy small block. So it does have a pretty long stroke, and I like that for one reason, because engines with longer strokes have an advantage of making torque easier and they tend to make that torque lower in the RPM range, which is perfect for a work truck, perfect for a truck that is meant to tow. So I really like that GM has focused on extending the stroke and really adding some natural torque and some low end power to this thing. Now, as I always say, no engine is perfect and this one is no exception. There are a couple issues and we'll dive into them. So the first common issue is a 
major, major red flag when it comes to this engine, and it is oil consumption. And GM literally just settled a class action lawsuit in 2022 for, you guessed it, oil consumption. The class action lawsuit was settled for the 5.3 liter Vortex between 2011 and 2014. And thankfully the newer 5.3s don't suffer from that issue. But to hear that the newer 6.6 .6 liter engines are having the same issue is a huge concern. Many owners of the 6.6 .6 liter are complaining about using over a quart of oil per thousand miles, which is a lot of oil consumption. And it seems like this engine's oil consumption is coming from the piston rings as well as the PCV valve. And that is the exact issue that the 2011 to 2014. Now this has prompted GM to release a service bulletin, which I think is kind of a little bit of a joke, but nonetheless, we'll go over it. Now the first thing I saw when I read this service bulletin here is that they just really updated it from <laughs> the five threes that were burning oil and just added 2020 to 2022 um, Chevy 6.6 .6 liter. But, um, but this is what really gets me. Um, according to GM, while the vehicle is still under warranty, which this one is, it is acceptable to burn one quart of oil per hundred gallons of fuel burnt. Now, this truck right here, I believe my fuel mileage is like 12 to 13 miles per gallon. So let's call that, I don't know, 1300 miles. So you're telling me I can burn one quart of oil in 1300 miles and that is quote unquote acceptable. Um, to me, that's not acceptable. I'm, I'm sorry. And then finally, it kind of goes through like how to properly measure your oil, make sure the truck's on a flat surface, blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> but the last thing I find kind of funny is that it does mention towing and how towing can also increase fuel consumption, which is true, but this truck is literally meant to tow. Um, so I did just, yeah, this, I think this is a little bit of a joke from GM here, to be honest. A broken engine, which GM says is after 8,000 kilometers, I believe, is technically a broken engine. So um, after 8,000 kilometers, realistically, you should be burning zero oil between oil change services or intervals just driving around town. If you're towing daily, Yes, you are gonna be burning a little bit of oil and you need to make sure you look on your dipstick. But I mean, even still, I remember when I was towing with my 5.7 Hemi, uh, I literally towed across the country over the mountains with a, like, I think it was like a 6,000 pound trailer. And uh, <laughs> that engine was working extremely hard. Over that journey, I burned like a quarter of a quart. So basically a quarter of a liter of oil. That's the only time I ever topped up that engine with oil was when I towed 5,000 kilometers with it. My 6.4 Hemi in my power wagon, I towed 1,400 kilometers to the East Coast, New Brunswick. Um, I had about a 9,100 pound trailer behind it. Didn't lose any measurable amount of oil. So, I mean, the fact that GM says you can lose basically a liter of oil or a quart of oil in like 1,200 miles and that's acceptable is just, it. It's not, I, yeah, I, I don't like that at all. Now there's two silver linings to this issue. The first one is, is that there is a low oil warning that will pop up on the dash with this truck. So you literally won't drive this thing dry. Um, so that's the first silver lining is that it will notify you when you're low on oil, hopefully. The second thing is technically oil consumption is really not that catastrophic. It will probably lower the life of your spark plugs. That's one thing that it'll definitely kind of hurt. But in general, burning oil, it's not the most catastrophic thing. So if you guys do have this engine and you are losing oil or burning oil, um, as long as you're topping it up correctly and you're keeping an eye on the oil level, you should be okay. Now, a second issue that I heard is somewhat common is having exhaust manifolds, gaskets leak. This is, again, not catastrophic at all. It's just gonna be more annoying. It's gonna make probably a, a ticking noise, but uh, yeah, not catastrophic at all. It's more just annoying, but I have heard that it seems to be a common thing on these that the exhaust manifold gaskets start to leak. Another concern with this engine is the fact that it's a direct injection engine. Nothing inherently wrong with the direct injection system, but there are a little bit of drawbacks from that. Mainly, you tend to get carboned up intake as well as intake valves. 
um, on a normal port injection engine. The fuel itself injecting into the intake um, as well as onto the um, intake valve tends to clean um, all that carbon soot off of there so it just stays clean. Um, with direct injection, obviously your injector is directly into the combustion chamber. So with an EGR on this engine, you're gonna get all that soot kind of coming back and you're gonna get start to get carbon deposits on that intake. And unfortunately, it seems like the only way to really clean that is to actually get in there and clean it manually. If you guys are experiencing a little lack of power, maybe even some misfires, it could be that your intake is a little bit carboned up. Another complaint I've heard about this engine, not necessarily an issue, is the quote unquote lack of power. Now, personally driving this around, I think that the lower RPMs, anywhere from like 1500 to 2500 RPM, I think the engine is actually quite responsive. I think it's quite torquey. Um, and that's exactly what GM was going here with the direct injection as well as that long stroke to get that, you know, responsiveness torque at a low RPM. And I like that a lot, but I guess I can tell, you know, when you really put your foot into it, get up above 3000 RPM, it just, there, there's not much get up and go. And yes, I understand, you know, this is a 7,500 pound truck, give or take, but this thing is also supposed to be able to tow 17,000 pounds. So you would like it to have a little bit of get up and go when it's unloaded. I will say my power wagon is much quicker than this, but my power wagon also has 410 gears. So that's, you know, it's kind of tough to compare the two. If GM put some higher gearing, a 10 speed Allison in here, I think this engine would feel a lot more peppy. Now the last issue or complaint I've heard about from owners is the high fuel consumption. And again, I mean, yes, this is an HD truck. It weighs a lot. It's not very aerodynamic. Um, and if you're looking for fuel economy, go buy a Honda Civic. But I guess people are saying the fuel economy on this thing is just like egregious, egregiously bad. Personally, I'm getting 19.1 liters per 100 kilometers. That's driven 65 kilometers, a good mix of highway and in town driving. So if you guys are looking for a fuel efficient HD pickup truck, go spend the extra $10,000 and buy a Duramax because this is not it. So besides the oil consumption issues, I think this is gonna be a pretty reliable engine. Um, it's just a very simple push rod V8. There's not that much that can really go wrong on it. And I think we have to remember that this truck or this engine's only been out since 2020. And with all new engines, the first couple of years tend to be much more flawed than the rest. So hopefully GM can figure out this oil consumption issue. And as the years go by, I really think this will just kind of be a great workhorse of an engine and uh, hopefully give people lots of reliability. So to conclude guys, a lot of people wanted me to review this engine and I was pretty excited to do it, but I have to be honest, I was a little underwhelmed about this 6.6 .6 liter gas engine. The oil consumption issue, it just it put a sour taste in my mouth. I mean, to me, I would steer clear of this engine just because of that issue, especially because it's a reoccurring issue that GM has already dealt with. And it's like, why is this coming back to life in a new engine that GM has just made? So. To me, that is just not really that great. So that paired with relatively low power numbers and pretty bad fuel economy, to me, it's just, I, I, would, I would probably consider the 7.3 Ford over this engine and most likely the 6.4 Hemi over this engine. Um, you know, with the, with the 7.3, you get the 10 speed and then with the Hemi, you get the eight speed transmission, which I think makes a huge difference just in terms of drivability. I think this engine is gonna be a great fleet truck. It's gonna be a great work truck, but um, you know, in terms of like a personal truck for me, I just, I don't think I would consider this gas engine over, like I said, the Ford or the Ram, but that's just me personally. That's my opinion, guys. Um, let me know what you think, if you think I'm wrong, if you think I missed something. Anyways, guys, as always, I hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. Like I mentioned in my last couple of videos, I cannot wait till we get some better spring weather and uh, I can put a trailer behind all these trucks and actually take it out in the real world and truly test these engines out. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully you guys are too. Um, but anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.